Well, Alex, welcome to Bedford Blues. Uh, what's your first thoughts about uh, joining us here at Goldenton Road? Uh, to, to be honest, mainly just um, excitement. Um, we obviously b being at Coventry, uh, especially last year with the Cup in the League, we actually played Bedford. I think it was like four times before um, COVID hit, uh, and, and my memories for playing against Bedford for for London Welsh and for for Coventry is just uh, actually the atmosphere. Um, I mean, the slope is obviously has a, a, a bit of history and is a you know a bit of a, a champ legend in itself, but. Um, just the atmosphere of playing for the club, um, you know, when, when every time I played against Bedford, they've always played like a very uh, expansive and like high tempo game. And it's like exciting rugby. It's not probably your, your attritional champ um, in terms of like, you know, really forward orientated and, you know, 10 man rugby. Um, but it's a bit more exciting, a bit more um, free flowing. And obviously a lot of that is irrelevant to me because I play second row. But, um, you know, in terms of, uh, actually having like a good feel for the club um yeah you know I, I just can't wait to get stuck in um you know a lot of the lads I, I'd spoken to have uh, previously played at uh, Bedford's and a couple of lads uh, you know Jordan who I, I played with at uh, Saints um you know spoke really highly of the place um so you know it was a bit of a no-brainer um ironically uh my worst game of rugby I've ever played in was actually against Bedford's um, when I made my London Welsh debut uh, it was at Bedford and I think we lost 66-24 that day um, so I'm hoping I can be on the right end of the scoreboard uh, this season a couple of times but um, no really looking forward to it um, and uh, you're just looking forward to getting stuck in and, and meeting the lads and the staff. Yeah, the championship doesn't necessarily change too much in terms of teams and things like that. Do you, when you play against the side a lot, do you, in your head, create sort of markers about them? These play this this style of rugby and that is maybe where I'd look to go to? Or is it just a case that, you, you know, like the fan, the fan base that you've mentioned, or is it like a blend of everything, I guess? Yeah, I, I think it's a bit of both, really. I think you're always conscious of, of grounds that are going to have like a lot of atmosphere. So, um, you know, everywhere I've been, uh, you're coming to Goldington or playing at a Goldington Road, it, the fans have always been mentioned because there is, you know, it's quite a, an intimate setting, very close to the pitch, you know, two and a half, three thousand. And like consistently every time you play, that's what you can expect. So I think to, Definitely the, the crowd has always kind of been a part of it. But then also, um, you know, for example, you go to someone like Donny, you know, they're going to have a big pack. But I think when every time I've played against Bedford again, it's always been, OK, they're going to move the ball. They're probably not necessarily going to kick to exit every time they're 22. They are going to try and run. Um, you know, they are going to try a few trick plays. Um, you know, always had, you know, very, very good back three. Um you know, traditionally you have guys like uh, Josh Bassett, um, you know, obviously has done very well and gone on to play for Austin England. And then, um, you know, more recently you've had guys like, uh, you know, Dean Adamson, who, um, you know, I think was like top try scorer in the league you know, for several years running. And then, you know, Rich Lane also, Pat Tapley. So, you know, you, you've got all these, you know, exciting back three players, but, you know, there's quality all over the park. Um, but ju and just the togetherness, really, they, you know, Every time I've played against Bedford, they always seem to have a really good team spirit and kind of play for each other. Um, so, you know, you know you're, it's a bit of a no-brainer, you know, who wouldn't want to be a part of that if the, if the opportunity arose? So, um, fortunately, um, the, the coaches don't think I'm completely useless and they've given me an opportunity to join. So, um, hopefully I can uh, repay some of the faith. Yeah, you've played against us on uh, quite a few occasions. If supporters don't, particularly know who you are what sort of second row do you see yourself as I, I to be fair I, I'm obviously probably in the team for um for my, my set piece so I'd say line out um you know I, I think every every second row is just a very frustrated back rower who's probably not quick enough or skillful enough to play um but you, you know for me personally I I, I my I suppose attribute is is kind of just working hard. I'd say I'm as a second row more of a grafter. Um, I I can cover six, and I have done actually the, my my first year at Coventry. Um, I actually played more at uh, six than I did second row. But um, yeah, I, I I'd say for me, I'm I'm 
probably not a, a flashy player, but I sort of pride myself on on um, you know getting my basics done, getting the set piece. That's obviously something that I um, am in the team for, and certainly something that I take a huge amount of personal pride about. So that's kind of like the area that I'll be focusing on. But um, you know, I've not scored a try in two years, so it'd be nice to sort of get you know maybe a walk over from uh, two meters out. But um, but no, hopefully, um, as I say, the coach just didn't think I was completely useless. And hopefully the fans weren't either. But um, I'll, I'll let them be the judge of that. And it seems a perfect fit because, you know, we're speaking uh, before we've started this interview that you're going to be studying in the town as well. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm enrolling in um, a degree that um, at Bedford Uni in uh, sport and physical education just to do alongside... Um, work and then alongside playing at the club as well um, so it, it, it's actually always something I've, I've kind of wanted to do but just for whatever reason through work or um, you know bouncing around different clubs it's never really made sense but um, so you know it kind of seemed like the perfect time to do it really now that I'm a bit uh, close to home um, so you know hopefully I'll, I'll be at um, you know, Bedford for, for the whole duration of that and, and beyond um but yeah i suppose i am kind of uh, very emotionally and physically investing into bedford as a town um but yeah you know i'm just uh, really looking forward to it yeah you're at, uh, you've hinted to them, uh, a, a little bit in some answers but you started your career at northampton saints in in and around the team when they had the success of premierships and challenge cups and that kind of things reaching finals and all this kind of stuff what did you maybe learn from your time at Saints that will A, be able to help the young players that are currently at Saints and are going to be with us next season, but also for your career in general, that winning mentality that would have been around Franklin's Gardens at the time? Well, I suppose the, the, the main thing is during that time, I was quite fortunate. There was a lot of um, the guys who were playing my position, but were obviously in the um, senior, sub squad, uh, senior side, sorry, were were world class players. So, you know, we had uh likes Christian Day, um, Courtney Laws, Sammy Manoa, um, you know, kind of like Prem rugby legends. Um, so for me, I, I was just trying to learn as much as I could off them in terms of not only how they played. So like Christian Day was like phenomenal with me at um, you know, helping me develop my sort of set piece understanding, but also about the kind of habits they had in terms of preparation for games and for training um, especially around making their body right so I suppose one the, the main thing I learned was um, you know forming positive habits in terms of you, your own preparation um, so you put obviously the best the better prepared you are the better place the team will be to succeed um, so I mean that that I think is massive for, for kind of any player really but um, especially because there is going to be such a um, strong Northampton influence. Um, you know, it's kind of just about, you know, bonding with those guys as quickly as possible. Um, so, you know, ultimately, I know they are coming from another club, but we're all going to be, um, you know, in it together as a way and representing Bedford for hopefully the whole season. Um, so I, I suppose for, for us as players, it's just about, um, you know, trying to understand one another as quickly as possible. Um, you know, hopefully with um, some eased restrictions. We'll be able to have a, have a social um, just so we can get to know each other. But um, yeah, I suppose those are some of the challenges that we'll have this year, but also, um, you know, we'll kind of be better for it, I suppose. I always ask the same question to end player signing interviews. Is there a special message you maybe have for the supporters ahead of the full 2021-22 championship campaign? Uh, probably just, um, you know, thank you. First of all, there, there are a couple of uh, people have reached out on um, social media. So, you know, thank you for the for the warm welcome so far. Um, really forward to getting stuck in and, and hopefully very shortly we'll be, be able to um, meet you all in, in person and um, you know, enjoy a drink after a game. But um, really looking forward to uh, to representing the, the club this year and um, you know, hopefully we can do all proud. <laughs>